Hey, welcome back to the Get Frumpy Happy Hour with everybody's favorite broad and beloved columnist, Marla Jo Fisher. I'm Sam Dunn, a senior editor for the Southern California News Group, and I'm also a proud FOM, which is a friend of Marla's. I want to thank all our subscribers and attendees for making the virtual programs possible. And by the way, if you're a Reader Rewards subscriber attending tonight, you're automatically entered to win a $50 gift card from BevMo, which should come in handy in happy hour. Anyway, and hey, if you're not a subscriber, why not? Go to scng.com forward slash subscribe and find your local paper and sign up. Anyway, before we get started, I need to tell you all a few things. If you're in the audience, you're muted to allow for the free flow of conversation, rather for the free flow of Marla. But if you have questions, and we hope you do because tonight is Ask Marla Anything Night, you can use the Q&A feature on the Zoom toolbar on your screen. It's right there at the bottom, you'll see it. If you wanna just add a comment or talk to other people, you can use the chat feature. Um, we're gonna be monitoring the questions and comments and pass them along to Marla as, as much as possible. Uh, also, to know, this session will be videotaped and a link will be sent to you, so it will also be posted at scng.com forward slash virtual events and on our SCNG YouTube channel so you can uh, revisit the best of Marla. Anyway, now it's my distinct pleasure to bring on the reason for the season, our longtime columnist and author of Frumpy Middle-Aged Mom Dispatches from the Front Lines of Motherhood, Marla Jo Fisher. Marla! Hey, happy Friday, yay! Yay! Hello, it's sir. so good to see you. So, girl, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Pinot Noir. It's Roblar 2019 Pinot Noir from Healdsburg, which if you don't know, is in Sonoma. And knowing me, of course, I bought this Pinot, which is a very nice Pinot, at Grocery Outlet on their 20% off sale. And if you hear barking, that's Lil Wayne, like huffing at the mailman. Um, oh, excuse me, letter carrier. Um, and... <laughs> I recommend this. I think I paid the unheard of sum of $7.99, which is about twice what I usually pay for wine, but I bought it by accident, but it's really yummy. So if you can stand $7.99 for wine, you know, I have these friends, I don't know about you, Sam, you probably do too. I have these friends who are dinks, you know, double income, no children, no kids. And, you know, they're, you, you go out with them and they're like, Oh my gosh, this wine is only $22 a bottle. It's such a deal. Not like $22 a bottle. Are you kidding me? I could buy an entire case of wine for $22, but I never tell them that because I still want to be invited to their house to drink their $22 wine, right? So, yeah, and what you're such a classy. I have to tell you, okay, so you know that I no longer drink. So, yeah. but, but I've become an expert in non alcoholic beverages. And this, it's called Frisenex. It sounds like something you put in your car, but it actually tastes really good. It tastes like real champagne. So that's that's what I'm imbibing tonight. And I was just tell I was telling her earlier that I need to get some of that for Curly Girl's wedding because uh, some of the people attending, including her groom, do not drink. So they will appreciate being able to do their toast with real champagne and not, you know uh sparkling cider or whatever it is right hey speaking of of uh of her wedding we already have a question from linda dyer she wants to know will the wine you got for your daughter's wedding last until the wedding oh linda you must be on my facebook page so you already saw the case of wine my my living room right now and i would show you if i wasn't too lazy um my living room right now is covered with cases of wine i mean there's like wine piled everywhere because we need to um, uh, clean out the garage because all that wine's going in the garage. Now, the good news is once that wine gets in the garage, it'll be harder for me to break it open. But um, until then, yeah, that's a very good question because she's not getting married until May. I'm not telling you people when because I don't want you to crash the wedding and drink it all. But um, <laughs> she's getting married in May. And the reason that I bought it all now is because I'm a cheapskate and Grocery Outlet was having their 20% off sale. So we actually had a lot of fun because what we did was we went to my friend Iris's house and Iris is a sommelier, right? Which is like a wine expert. And so I went to Grocery Outlet and I bought a bunch of wines and we went over there at like really cheap wine. I'm talking like $2.99 a bottle or $3.99 a bottle, right? And our objective was to pick wines 
that were drinkable, that were cheap yet drinkable. You know, it wasn't my objective to pick a wine that tasted good because I can't afford to feed my wine, my friends wine that tastes good. I just needed wine that wouldn't be embarrassing to drink at the wedding, you know? So, <laughs> so we went over to Iris's house, or actually Iris's sister's house, and we tasted a bunch of different wines and we picked out our top wines and we bought those. And that's what's all over my kitchen right now, all over my living room, actually, all over the living room and the hallway and everywhere else you can think of. And I don't have the answer to that question because I don't have a crystal ball. And of course, if I knew what was going to happen, you know, in the future, I might drink it all now, but you know, we'll see what happens. And if you do drink it all, there might be another special, you know, at, at BevMo or, or grocery outlet or the 99 cent store. Have you ever tried the 99 cent store wines, by the way? Okay, I have, and I wasn't impressed, but here's the thing, ah, do tell. You don't okay. know you're getting like, you know, two buck chuck, which uh, if you're a Trader Joe's fan, you know what that is, is Charles Shaw wine, which is only a right. dollar bottle. And here's the thing with two buck chuck, okay? Uh, sometimes it's really good because they're, you know, they're blending it from all these, from these different places. So sometimes you get it, excellent bottle of wine and sometimes it's only an adequate bottle of wine and you really don't know what you're going to get until you actually drink it so it might be the same with 99 cent only but of course 99 cent only stores no longer are only 99 i heard that i haven't been to one in a long time and what are they a dollar 99 now wait what do you mean you, you haven't been to 99 cent only store for a long time i have I'm, okay what can i say i'm you know I'm out of the loop now in 99 cents. Go to a 99 cent only store. But anyway, um, but uh, yeah, even the Dollar Tree, the standby, the Dollar Tree, because 99 cent only, they do have things that cost 99 cents, but not to be shocked or anything, but they, they have stuff that costs quite a bit more. It's still a bargain, but it's cost quite a bit more. So if you walk in there and stuff, don't be horrified. Okay. Steal yourself emotionally. You know, do a little bit of car <laughs> and just prepare yourself for the shock of going in there and discovering that everything is more expensive than you were expecting. But, and the, the hor most horrible shock to me actually was discovering that Dollar Tree is going to start charging more than 99, than a dollar, right? Because they were my holdout. It's like everything in the yeah. store, dollar. It's almost all cheap. But no. Chinese crap, but you know, whatever. Sometimes you need cheap Chinese crap. So, Anyway, I don't, I just launched off into a tirade, but anyway, um, yeah. Well, so do we have questions? We do have questions. So Paula Hansen wants to know, we're going on our first ever cruise next month to the Mexican Riviera. We're going with frequently cruising friends, so they will show us the ropes, but do you have any tips for us? Oh man, you're going to have tips for her. Okay, uh, Paul, um, I hope you're not going to take the shore excursions, okay? Because the cruise line, they don't make that much money on your actual price of your cruise. They make a lot of money on those shore excursions, okay? So you pay, you know, $7.99 for your cruise, but then you pay, you know, like $1.99 or whatever it is to go on the shore excursions, which basically consists of, getting on a bus with a whole lot of other people, some of whom are super annoying, and trotting around to different places of interest where you get off the bus with 30 to 50 other people. And then somebody leads you around and shows you stuff, right? And, you know, if, if you already bought the tickets, it's fabulous, you'll love it, right? But if you haven't already bought the tickets, don't do that, okay? What you want to do, this is what you want to especially the Mexican Riviera, because I've cruised the Mexican Riviera, okay? This is what you do. You get off the ship, and when you get off the ship, there's a whole lot of taxi drivers sitting there, and they're waiting for you, okay? And you go up to the taxi driver, and you say, uh, you know, buenos dias, buenos noches, buenos tardes, whatever it is, okay? Because Mexico, oh, damn, I almost spilled my wine. Oh, shh, I didn't curse, okay? So, um, and because Mexico very polite to it. So it's very important to always be very, very polite in Mexico. Okay. So you would say, 
buenos dias. Then they will say buenos dias. You say, how much would you be able to take us on a tour of the town? And if so, how much would it cost? Right? Whenever you get in a Mexican taxi, it's always very important to confirm the cost of the trip. Okay. And I guarantee you it's going to be a tiny fraction of what the the cruise excursion would have been. You will be on your own. You will do exactly what you want and you'll have a blast. You know, the first time I went to Puerto Vallarta, we did that, which was, oh, I don't know, 40 years ago. The first time we went to Puerto Vallarta, we did that. We had so much fun. I mean, he took us to Elizabeth Taylor's house and he took us, you know, to where they filmed Night of the Iguana, you know, with Richard Burton. And we had an absolute blast. And that's really what you should do. And the, what you want to do is you want to go up and talk to the different taxi drivers. OK, and you want to find one that you like. Now, generally, those taxi drivers are going to be per people, people, and they're going to have a sense of humor. But you want to find one who's fun and who you just feel a connection with because they're the ones that are going to make the trip fun for you, right? So you go off and you have your excursion for the day. You have fun with your taxi driver and he takes you to wherever you want to go. And then you come back to the ship and you watch all those weary people getting off their bus with their big tags around their necks like their cattle or something at the auction and you can just go like ha 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 i'm not there so that's one of the tips okay the second tip would be and i'm not i'm not telling you to do this okay i'm just telling you that i've read that people do this and i've never personally done this okay they won't let you bring any booze on the ship because they want to sell you the booze on the ship okay so but I know that you could actually purchase online, you can purchase fake shampoo bottles and fake conditioner bottles. And you buy those and you pour your booze into them. And then you bring that on the ship. I'm not saying it works and I've never done it, but I'm just saying that people do do that. Don't think you can just throw a bottle of booze into your suitcase and sneak because you cannot. I don't know how they know. I don't know if they have vodka sniffing dogs at the airport or at the cruise terminal. I don't know if they x-ray your luggage, but they will know that you have that bottle of vodka in there and then you will be embarrassed when they take it away. So uh, no. those Louise mentions, Lu Louise mentions, uh, they usually let you bring one bottle of wine, but not the hard stuff. Oh, so well, there you go. Yeah. Like, if it were me, I would definitely have to, you know, you have to pay extra for that booze package before you go on. And I would okay. definitely pay extra for the booze package. We all know that. Right. So, okay. I don't even know why I have to mention that because it's kind of self-explanatory, but anyway, do we have oh, any wait. other questions? Oh, yeah. We had a question okay. on, uh, we, I put the little plastic bottles. I can't read the rest of it. In my shoes, it says. But we had another question on Cabo. Oh, Glynis McKinley wants to know, is Cabo any good? We have a timeshare presented, uh, present, yeah, presentation deal with Hilton there. Can, we, can they hold us hostage if we don't buy since we are in Mexico? No. And I just want to tell you, I really hate Cabo. I go to Baja oh. all the time knows but like Cabo is now and if you love Cabo don't send me nasty letters okay I mean a lot of people love Cabo so I'm sorry if you love Cabo but that's just the way it is I go to Baja all the time but you know what I go go to Baja for wilderness and solitude and uh. guess what no wilderness or solitude in Cabo because it is now condo land and it is a place where spring breakers go to party and throw up so um you know, I've been to Cabo on a cruise, you know, I haven't done the time, I've done time presentations in the past, but no, they can't hold you to a timeshare presentation. I mean, they can torture you and they can make you feel guilty, but what I want you to do is I want you to go online and Google this and find a, the Dave Barry column that he wrote about a timeshare presentation that he went to. And it's so funny that after you read that, you will not feel badly about, about turning it down. And yeah, you might have to give up hours of your life to listen to these people pitch you, but just keep in mind, you don't have to do it. And also the other thing, which I don't know, which be very careful about this, okay? Um, 
is I don't know, in the United States, you have a cooling off period for timeshare purchases, like three days or something like that. I'm not quite sure where you can go back and say, oh, I changed my mind. I don't want to buy it. But I don't know about Mexico, different laws down there, you know, so do not buy a timeshare. Do not buy a timeshare, no matter what they do to you, no matter what they say to you, if they torture you with cig lighted, lighted cigarettes, do not buy a timeshare. Just do not. My friend, Laura, one of my best friends, who's a social worker who found my kids for me, right? She has a master's degree. This is a highly intelligent woman. She got suckered in. She bought a freaking timeshare, right? Yeah, my in-laws did too. My in-laws did too. Yeah, and they, had, they had it for years and years. Oh my God, what have I done? And it was really a hassle to get out of it. So just don't yeah. do it. So anyway, go to the presentation, take everything they have to offer, and then just say, muchas gracias, see you later, and walk away. Okay, so Brooke wants to know, what's your favorite beach on the Mexican Riviera cruise? Do you have one? Oh my gosh, that is such a hard question, truly, honestly. Um, well, I love Puerto Vallarta and I hope that your cruise, your cruise should stop in Puerto Vallarta. Okay. I just got back from Puerto Vallarta because I can't go a month without going somewhere. Right. So, um, okay. Here's my advice to you, which you probably won't take, but I'll give it to you anyway. Okay. When you get off the ship in Puerto Vallarta and you see that taxi driver, you tell him, can you, and if you email me, I will give this to you in writing so you don't have to try to scribble notes or whatever okay but there is a place called Boca de Tomotlan okay and Boca is the last uh stop on the bus that goes down along the coast south of Puerto Vallarta okay so this is what you do this is way more fun right than doing anything in the city okay so you when, when, when you get off the boat, when the ship, sorry, um, when you get off the ship, you tell the taxi driver, okay, por favor, could you tell me how much would it cost for you to take us to Boco de Tomotlan and then wait for us while we go to a beach and then come back, then bring us back to the ship, right? So say five hours or whatever your ship schedule. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get in the taxi. You have a very beautiful scenic drive down the coast, south of Puerto Vallarta. You're gonna get to this adorable little fishing village called Boca de Tomotlan. And some people just never go on past Boca because it's very cute and it's in the jungle, you know, it's like where the jungle comes right down to the water, right? And, but if you can tear yourself away from Boca, then what you do is you go and you get on a water taxi there for $5, five, $5, okay? You get on a water, yes. Cinco. You, cinco, cinco dolores. Cinco dolores. Um, <laughs> so you get on a water taxi there and it takes you, you can go down to these remote beaches where there's literally no road to these beaches. You can go down to this, town in the middle of nowhere called Yalapa, right? And it's a town of only a few hundred people and there's no road to it. And it's just, it's fabulous. You, it's not actually an island, but you feel like you're in an island because you're in the jungle on the beach and it's fantastic. So you go down there and they have these beach restaurants right on the beach with bars. And all you do is you plunk yourself down in one of the lounge chairs and they bring you food and drink and you, the lounge chairs are free as long as you're hanging out there. Right. And the water is beautiful and warm and you just have a fabulous, Oh, wait, oh, 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 okay. I got to tell you, this is very important. The pie lady comes by. There's these pie, pie, ladies? pie ladies and these ladies oh. come walk up and down the beach and they sell pies like American style pies. Okay. And they're delicious. And if you don't get a pie, you'll be really sorry. You don't have to buy the whole pie. You can buy slices. So they'll have like coconut pie. They'll have pecan pie, whatever. And as a tradition of people who go down there a lot to buy a slice of pie from the pie lady. Okay. But meanwhile, you're drinking margaritas, you're drinking beer, you're drinking Cokes, you're drinking whatever you're eating shrimp and you're just hanging out and then 
when you're done, you get back on the water taxi and you go back to Boca and your taxi takes you back to the ship. And that was your fabulous, fabulous day, right? Yeah, highly recommend. I just did that, I this, wasn't on the ship, but I just did that literally a week ago. This is a change of topic, although we could probably do a Mexico show. Oh we yeah, could that probably just do the whole show on Mexico. Yes, indeed. That and have good. and have you give everyone Spanish lessons with your fantastic accent. Um, uh, so, but Russell, this is a very important question. Russell, and uh, forgive me, Russell, was it Russell Sink, I believe his last name is Junior. He wants to know. I would like to know where I could get an autographed copy of your book. I read your column in the playlist section of Sunday's Los Angeles Daily News. I enjoy your column very much. It's very educational. I like the columns you write on the theme parks too. So where can he get a signed copy? First of all, thank you, Russell, for giving me a huge plug, which I appreciate. And second of all, I want to ask you a question, which is I love to come up and do book signings because my book came out a year ago, like right in the middle of COVID. And I couldn't do any book signings because people wouldn't let me. And so now I'm just kind of randomly going around and doing book signings wherever. And I want to do one in the Valley, but I really don't know a place to do it. So you tell me where to do this. It needs to be a place that is public, that is easy for people to find, where there's parking, where I can hang out and the security guard's not going to come and throw me out. And if you find that place for me, then I'll come. Or if you get on my Facebook page, which is Frumpy Middle-Aged Mom, um, or just email me, then we'll figure this out because I do actually really want to come to the Valley because, you know, I love the Valley. Well, you know, Marla, that once upon a time in uh, the bookstore in Montrose is our book partner and they, uh, Russell, just so you know, you can get signed copies of Marla's books there. Uh, she signs book plates and, and you oh, can buy them through there. I didn't even know did, that. Did, did you, didn't you know that that's where your book plates are going? No, I did not know that. No. Well, there you go. There you go. Once upon a time always has your, your copies, or at least they often have your copies. So, but I like the idea of you having a book, a book signing up there. That'd be great. Okay. Kathy Johnson says, Marla, as a longtime registered subscriber, my mom's sister-in-law and I traveled to Salem, Massachusetts and went to the, get this curly girl candy store. If you weren't aware of it, I was looking forward to sharing it with you. Did you know about that? No, did you send me a copy of the, of the uh, you know, cover of it so I can send it to my daughter? Or, you know, that's Kathy. like journalist lingo. The front <laughs> shop would be the way most people would describe that, yes. So <laughs> we, we have uh, some questions in the chat too. Again on, um, again on travel, and I love this one. What is your next vacation destination? I happen to know this because I'm going with you, but Marla, take it away. Okay, well, you know, I've been back from Puerto Vallarta for a week now, so it's really time to go on another trip. So um, we're going to Kenya, actually. We're going to Africa with Miss Samantha Dunn, who's here drinking her non-alcoholic wine. And uh, we're leaving, actually, on November 21st. Don't try to rob my house because Lil Wayne and uh, Cheetah Boy will be here. And um, <laughs> we're on the 21st, and we're going over Thanksgiving. So this will be the second year in a row, actually, I didn't get any turkey dinner. So I was just evaluating where we might be able to get a turkey dinner before then. But I love turkey. But um, yeah, so we're going on safari for the second time. I'm going for the second time with this particular company. And I really want to plug them because I love them. The company is called Kenia or Kenya. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. K-E-N-I-A tours and safaris and it's owned by this man named mr bot b-h-a-t-t -T, and i freaking love mr bot i love him we went on safari with his people uh when the kids were little i was trying to remember maybe like 12 years ago or something like that and it was very inexpensive and we had such a absolutely fantastic time and he's such a great guy and the amazing thing that happened was at the end of the safari after we all had such a good time um we pull over it's a sunday night it's our last day of safari and we pull over at this gas station in nairobi right and we're like why are we here right and we're just waiting and suddenly mr bot who i'd never met like gets on the van right the owner of the company got on the van on a sunday night 
and we're like, what are you doing here? And then he proceeded to download us on, you know, our safari and whether we had a good time and what we thought about everything. And I asked him, I'm like, why are you doing this? Never in my entire life have I ever heard of a travel company owner who does something like that. And he's like, because 14% of my business is return business. So I really want to know if people had a good time or if, they, if, it, if it was what that we were expecting. And that's the kind of guy he is. You know, we were going to go to, I wanted to go to Tanzania, okay? Because I'd never been to Tanzania, been to Kenya, never been to Tanzania. So six months ago, I told him, Mr. Bot, I want to go to Tanzania. And he's like, no, you can't go to Tanzania. And I'm like, why can't I go to Tanzania? And he said, because they're not reporting their COVID numbers there. There's something that is not good going on in Tanzania. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, because at that point I already had the safari bug. So I'm like, okay, fine, we'll go back to Kenya. We'll go back to Kenya, but we're going to different game parks than we went last time. There's a lot of game parks in Kenya. So anyway, it, and then just a few days ago, the New York Times wrote this big story about how they found all these mass graves of like COVID-19 uh, victims in Tanzania that they were being hidden so that nobody would know. And even the president who did all this died of, died of COVID, not to bring everything down, but like Mr. Bot knew, you know what I mean? He knew six months ago what was going on, which makes me trust him even more because he's taking care of us, right? Yeah, so anyway, absolutely. So um, we're very excited to go. We're gonna have our Thanksgiving there and we're gonna see a lot of animals. And Can't wait. I just hope- um, I Really recommend them so and our safari is only fifteen hundred dollars i'm just saying that you don't have to spend ten thousand dollars to go on an african safari so hey, so Mar marguerite shrank uh says this is a safari is also her bucket list and she's a, a little leery of it because she's a little gimpy so i know you're the the expert in gimp travel so what can what can you tell us about that how you okay. navigate that so, you know, I'm the queen of gimpiness now, right? I mean, I'm actually starting, I'm trying to write more and more about how to travel when you're gimpy because I really want people to. And I think if, if you're on this Zoom right now, you probably know that I have stage four cancer and I have mobility issues, but here's the funny thing. Okay, the more I travel around and the more I do, the less gimpy I get because I'm forcing those muscles to work and I'm forcing those muscles to do things that they weren't doing before, just so you know. But in terms of gimpiness, you don't have to worry because guess what? They don't freaking let you walk around on a safari. <laughs> you <laughs> stay in the safari van, not for you, but for the safety of the animals. So you can go on a safari. You're not going to have a problem. It's going to be okay. What you're going to do is you're going to, when you make your plane reservations, now the thing that's hard, okay, is the flights because you have to change planes in Europe because there's no flights nonstop. So uh, it's going to be 11 hours to Europe yikes and then it's going to be nice look at sam's face because she's like so horrified right now at the thought of this she didn't even know um and then it's going to be eight hours from europe to africa but here's the thing i got drugs okay my my doctor i told my doctor no no, no they're legal drugs okay oh so, oh uh, i talked to my doctor and i'm like look i have to fly 20 hours on these planes and you know i'm gimpy and i'm sick and he's like here have some drugs right so i'm getting like these sleeping pills these pain pills actually that are going to put me to sleep and they're just going to put me to sleep right and so take the sleeping pills. are you going to have extra <laughs> how much is it worth to you is it worth <laughs> anyway carry on sorry okay so get the sleeping pills right get your flight Get your sleeping pills to sleep on the plane so you'll feel better. Get a wheelchair, right? It's free to get a wheelchair and it's not difficult when you book your flights. You want to, there's always a special little place and they kind of hide it where you can check if you need special assistance and you check that and then you can check that you need a wheelchair. And believe me, it's awesome to have a wheelchair because you cut all the lines 
like everybody in line at the TSA, everybody in line everywhere, you just zoom on past, you know, the, the attendant pushes you on past all those people, you just cut all the freaking lines and so does everybody with you. And you zoom on, you know, you zoom all the way and you don't have to walk through that horrible airport, right? You, you know, I always tip the attendant, you know, a few bucks, right? But it's definitely the way to do it. Okay, so you've gotten all the way to the airport and you've gotten on, oh, and then, okay, so you, the wheelchair has taken you to the gate. And then you go up and you tell the gate agent, like, I'm a gimp, I need to board first. Okay. And so they're quite familiar with this. And so they're like, okay. So then you cut the line again and you board first before anybody else does. Okay. And then the same thing when you get off, you, you know, wait until the end and then you get off and then hello, hallelujah, there's your wheelchair waiting for you again to take you to the front of the airport. Okay, so you do that. That's all before, of course, you even get to the safari. And then the safari people are going to pick you up at the airport, right? They're going to be there waiting for you. And then they're just going to take care of you every minute. They're going to put you in the safari vehicle. They're such nice people. They love their jobs. They're so happy to have a job in an environment where a lot of people are unemployed and you can't walk anyway. You know, they don't let you walk around the game parks, you know, because you might get eaten by a lion and then they would have to kill the lion, you know? So, um, so yeah. And then you can just tell them, like, tell whoever's your safari operator, which I recommend Mr. Bot. Um, you tell them I need at the lodge or wherever you're staying, I need to be in the front, right? Because I have mobility issues. So I need to be in the front near the food, right? You want to be near the food and the bar and, uh, and they'll take care of you really on it. I swear, I swear you could do it. Everybody told me I couldn't go to Greece, that it was insane to go to Greece. And I freaking went to Greece and I had a fantastic time. So there. So that is that is the next question. Christina Torres admits that she's behind in reading the papers, but she wants to know how Greece went and how you enjoyed it. She she says I haven't been there since 1984, but I hope to go there again next time I'm back in Europe. I love Greek food, wine, and ouzo, which me too. I love ouzo. Anyway. Oh my gosh, Greek was Greece was so much fun and the food. You know, I couldn't eat drink ouzo because I'm trying to eat keto because it's supposed to be good for cancer and whether it really is, I don't really know. But unfortunately, ouzo has a lot of carbs, so I did forego the ouzo, but I didn't forego the wine and allow me to point out that you got a you could get a craft this big of wine, of Greek wine for like $2.50. So, you know, Anyway, we had a fantastic time in Greece. I 100% recommend Greece. I'm trying to convince my one of my best friends to go to Greece. You know, for, you can do anything in Greece. You know, there's, of course, many historical attractions there that are like nothing else in the world. And there's hiking and there's, you know, needless to say, incredible beaches. And, you know, I when I went there as a gimpy person, I got guidebooks, okay? And I read them and I read the descriptions of them and I knew immediately that I could not go to Mykonos or Santorini, okay? Because first of all, because they're very hilly and I'm gimpy, right? So how was I gonna get around? And then secondly, because they're expensive and crowded in August mm -hmm. and I hate money and I hate crowds. So we ended up going to this island called Paros, which is P-A-R-O-S which is relatively flat. So it was actually easy for me to get around and not that crowded, a little bit crowded, but not that crowded. So just be aware that there's a whole world of things you can do in Greece and you can spend as much or as little as you want. And I loved it and I would go back there in a heartbeat. And I can understand now why Europeans go there all the time because of course it's really close for them, right? Yeah, it was all Europeans there, not too many Americans. Side note, when my when my parents worked in the Middle East, my mom wanted to take me to Greece and I was a bratty 19 year old and I said, Mom, I don't want to go. I want to go hang out with my boyfriend, which, you know, put it down to more of the stupidity of youth. Can you believe it? I still haven't been to Greece. Anyway, Nadia uh, Sokolov wants to know, Marla, do you feel safe traveling in Mexico? I know the answer, but I want you to answer that. And also, Ken Goodman wants to know how many places have you actually been to, Marla? 
You know what's really crazy? Okay, first of all, I hope that you'll join my Facebook page, okay? Because it's from me mom Facebook, from me middle aged mom Facebook page. We actually really have a lot of fun on there. So I hope you will join that. But the interesting thing about my Facebook page, there's so many fascinating people on there who have been to so many more countries than I have, right? So I might think I'm cool because I've been to many, con several continents, right? But there's people on there that have been to like 72 countries and shit, you know? I mean, like, there's no way. I've been, I don't know how many countries exactly, but I can say I've been to, been to every country except Antarctica and Australia. So yeah, I, that's actually a question. L L Linda wants to know if you've ever been to Antarctica. So we, so sorry, Linda, she hasn't been. Anyway, go ahead, carry on. You know what? It's too cold. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm not there just to say that I went there. I mean, if you have a serious interest in science and you want to go there because it's fascinating and, you know, all the science that gets done there and everything, more power to you, but it's too darn cold for me. Also, it's very expensive to go there and I'm too cheap. <laughs> hey, so get to the Mexico question. Well, I know you've been to Mexico. You love Mexico. I love Mexico. Do you feel safe there? Why do you feel safe there? How can you feel safe there? Well, let me ask you a question, okay? If you were living in Europe and somebody said to you, let's go to the United States and you said, oh, I can't go to the United States because all these people were at a concert in Las Vegas and so many of them got shot. Right. Or, you know, or they shoot people at schools there. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you can think up your own scenarios for all the terrible things that happen in this country, right? Well, all I can tell you is there's many millions of people in Mexico. I want to say 30, but I know it's more than that, right? There's like 10, 000, 10 million in Mexico City or something like that, right? But um, there's definitely place. Mexico is like anywhere else. I mean, there's places I would not go. Okay, I would not go to see Dodd Waters because people keep disappearing there, right? I mean, there's definitely when I go to Tijuana now, I just cruise on through, you know what I mean? I'm like not hanging out in Tijuana, right? But um, to kind of scar an entire country with the label of not being safe. I think is really unfair. I have a friend named Lena Weissman. Hi, Lena, if you're watching this, who moved from the United States to a little town called Sayulita, which is in the state of Hali, no, it's in the state of Nayarit, which is north of Puerto Vallarta, right? And she and her husband used to go there on vacation. And one day they just decided, why don't we live here, right? Because they could both work remotely, right? And you know, I remember after one of the terrible shootings that we had in this country, she posted something on Facebook that said, I'm so glad I live in Mexico. So, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying to you yeah. is yeah. And that Mexico is the safest place ever. Okay. Bad things do happen in Mexico. Okay. But what you do have to understand is that every time something bad happens in Mexico, there was just some kind of shooting in Cancun. I can't remember what it was. And there's been shootings in Acapulco and things like that. They make their big news in the United States. Whereas we have those same kind of shootings right down the freaking street. And they yeah. don't, make right? So I'm not, I'm not urging anyone to go to Mexico if you don't feel safe going to Mexico okay but I will tell you something I took my kids to Copper Canyon Copper Canyon is in a state called Sinaloa which is known as the home of yes, narco Sinaloa. okay narco so, I would mm -hmm. take my kids to Copper Canyon I had so many people tell me I was a bad mother I'm like well, how could you do that how could you take them to Copper Canyon? Like, how could you go to Sinaloa? Like, wow, you're like the worst mother I ever heard in my life. We had such a great time. I mean, the canyon was so beautiful. You, it's a canyon you can only get into by train. You take this fabulous train and you go into the canyon. And um, you, they have these fabulous hikes and zip lines and things like that you can do when you get into the canyon. And it's just marvelous. And we had the adventure of our lifetime and I would do it again in a heartbeat. And so I would just say, 
investigate, right? I mean, it depends on your comfort level. I go to Mexico constantly. I go to Mexico four or five times a year. So yeah, yeah. I've never had, oh yeah, okay, take that back. Okay, 35 years ago, I was in Ensenada, which is a port town that's also a tourist town in Baja, right? My friend and mm-hmm. I were walking back from a disco at three o'clock in the morning, back to our hotel on a pitch dark road that I would never walk back in California. I would never walk back on that dirt road, a road like that at 3 a.m., right? But I, I just, we did. And we got mugged. I mean, these guys, like it was a strong arm robbery. These guys tried to take our purses, okay? And I just fell down and threw on my purse and went through, fell on my purse and wouldn't give it to them. And then I just started screaming. And now if it was, if they had a gun or something, I would be like, hey, take my purse. You want my clothes? You know, what do you want? You want my shoes? But they were just, it was, and so I just started screaming and cars started pulling over and the guys ran away, right? That was 35 years ago. And that's the only, and we, they just ran away, right? So that was the only negative thing that has ever, ever happened to me in Mexico. The many, many times I've been to Mexico. So I can only speak from my own personal experience, but I love Mexico. I love the people in Mexico. I love the food in Mexico. I love tequila. I love the exchange rate. (laughs) Oh, it's 20 pesos to the dollar. It's unbelievable. So (laughs) that's all I can say about it. Yes, uh, agreed. Okay, Nadia wants to know, Marla, what is your secret formula for energy? And Stuart wants to know how your health is right now. Oh. Okay, my secret formula is called Wellbutrin. It's a drug. It's a medication, <laughs> right? Uh, better living through chemistry. And <laughs> I, uh, okay, so I started having chemo uh, over two years ago. It didn't really work, but what it did was it didn't work at all. But what it did was it messed up my body. So I was very weak after that. And I had like a lot of neuropathy and it just, it basically sucked. So I was trying to get my strength back and I have to tell you this. Okay. And this probably applies to any ailment, right? Which if you are determined, you can get much much better right i mean you know if you lie around in your recliner and think about how you have no energy guess what you have no freaking energy right if you go out and start walking i have an elliptical trainer which i 100 percent recommend i love my elliptical um if you start walking if you get on a treadmill if you go to an elliptical if you even go to a gym and tell them they're like, look, I'm super gimpy. I can't do anything. Like, help me, right? And hire a trainer. You could get so much stronger than you ever thought you could. It would be like, it's astonishing, right? It's Amen. astonishing how much stronger you can get. But what you, you know what you have to do? You have to want it and you have to be determined, right? To do it. And in addition to the energy that I have obtained doing that, um, I also, there's this lovely little medication, it's called Wellbutrin, and I asked the doctor, I'm like, can you give me anything that will just give me more energy, because, you know, my house is like, oh my gosh, it's just like full of crap that easily put away, and it's just, oh gosh, so I'm like, please, I need more energy, give me some more energy, and he's like, well, we have this medication, it's called Wellbutrin, and it supposedly gives you more energy, and I'm like, give it to me, give it to me. So I've been taking this Wellbutrin now for, I don't know, maybe a month and a half and it works. It really does give you more energy. So I would say a combination of just a flat out exercise program, even when you feel like crap, even when you don't want to exercise and chemistry, you know, I would say you can do so much more. Let me just tell you this story, which I'm sorry, I just keep going on and on and on. But a couple of years ago before COVID, I was invited to go to the candlelight processional in Disneyland, which is a very big deal. Uh, Only a few hundred people are invited to it and people would, you know, sell their grandmothers to get invitations. And I was invited, it's very, very beautiful um, event that takes place at Christmas every year. And I was invited to it, but the night they were having it, it was really cold and I was feeling really sick. 
So I really, I desperately wanted to bail on this thing, right? But the problem was I already invited my friend, okay? And I knew she really wanted to go. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I, I don't wanna bail on her. So finally I put on like three layers of pants and you know, like extra clothes. And I drove over there and I went, even though I just, I felt, honestly, I felt like crap. And, but here's the thing, I get in there and it was wonderful. And it was so great. And I totally forgot how I was feeling like crap. I forgot to feel like crap because the whole yeah. experience was just so wonderful. And we had a great time. And yeah, you know, afterwards I kind of had to go home. I couldn't stay and, you know, do other stuff at Disneyland. But that was a big wake up call for me because it made me realize, yeah, if you get out of your stupid ass chair and go do things, you're going to feel so much better. Because if you're going to feel rotten, you can feel rotten in your chair. So why not get out of your chair and go do things and maybe you'll feel rotten and maybe you won't. So that's been my theory ever since then. That's why I'm going to Africa. And Cammie Booker says that I agree that you look great, Marla. So there's that. And okay, so next question. Patricia Hutch Hutchinson wants to know, she says, sorry, I joined, uh, sorry, I just joined. So I hope this question is not a repeat. Have you written a new book, <laughs> Marla? Or are you going to write a new book? She really enjoys the way you write. So what do you got to say about that? Well, I like to write a book on travel that would be kind of a humorous book. I don't know if you guys remember this, but some of the old folks here, you know, I'm 65 years old now and I don't really understand how that happened, you know? <laughs> I look at people and they're like elderly people 65 and over and I'm like who's that because that's certainly not me how could I possibly be an elderly person yeah but some of you are going to know who this is right or Rob Bombeck absolutely if you could ever get a copy of this book you should get it because it's absolutely hilarious when you look like your passport photo it's time to go home and um okay chemo brain I've completely forgotten my train of thought but um but uh, book. What, what, what was your next book? book your next book oh 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 so I thought well I could write a travel book the problem is that the market is really saturated with travel books so there's just like so many travel books which by the way if you want to read a great travel book you should read the sex lives of cannibals it's been out for a long time but it's really a great it's really a hilarious hilarious book it's about this guy who lived in Vanuatu or something and wrote a story wrote 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 an entire book about living there but um so you know I've thought about writing a travel book but it hasn't happened yet but let me ask you this and I don't have to unleash this on you because you're asking a lot of questions but I felt like if you were being bad and you were not asking questions I was going to do this we've got 10 minutes you want to finish off with this which I was yeah. going to show my suitcase and I was going to show you all the things in my suitcase which I don't know maybe we should do another travel one right at some point right yeah so well definitely they're in my suitcase that live in my suitcase permanently but well, just what are the top three items I would like to know that what what are the top three items that have to go in your suitcase every time okay um the top three items well hold on this is a show and tell oh goody is that the backpack you wrote about in your column? Yeah, this is did the you one. write about it in your column or did you post about it? I forget. First of all, I have to explain this to you. See this bag right here? It has wheels yeah. and the backpack. And I put um, patches on the front that show the places I've been, which is just fun, right? Because mm -hmm. with chemo brain, you can't actually remember where you've been. So all I have to do is look at the patches and I can remember where I've been right like the new one says Greece anyway um so what I always keep in my backpack is first of all the book I never read because I always bring a book with me <laughs> hardcover book with me and I never ever read it but I'm sure someday if I did not bring the book I would read uh, you know I would and then I bring okay then this is my this is my medicine kit, okay? And notice it's transparent, so it's easy to tell what it is because I bring yeah. all my 
add medicines from home, right? And I throw them in there. And, you know, the nice thing is because they're already all packed up and they stay packed up permanently. So I've got Boney in here, which is for, you know, motion sickness and there's Pepto Abysmal and blah, 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 right? So I always have that. And then I have, um, okay, this is the toiletry bag and it has my brush and my toothpaste and my little tiny travel toothbrush and all that kind of stuff and my earplugs. Please get yourself some silicone earplugs, not foam ones, they suck. Get silicone earplugs, they work really well. You need them in your hotel, especially if you travel with my friends. And um, I will try not to take offense at that, but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Well, luckily, you don't have to sleep with me, right? So, um, well, there's that. She gets Not her yet. Okay. Oh, and this, all right. So, you can go to the dolly store, you can go to Daiso, the Japanese pick and save, and you can get yeah. these. I keep my little, all my little chargers and things in there, right? Oh, uh, yeah. bag, right? And it has all this stuff in it. Like, for example, hello. This is a nightlight. Plug it into the bathroom. You'll never be lost trying to find your way to the bathroom again. Okay. <laughs> um, so all the, oh, also um, a uh, a little um, extension cord, a little tiny extension cord. You can buy it for two dollars because you know a lot of times you'll go into a hotel and there won't be enough plugs. You need a plug, right? And uh, for two dollars you can bring it. You know, I mean, I look at everything like. How much space is it going to take up in my suitcase? You know, right. that's a big question, right. right? And I'm looking for, okay, hold on, where is, I bring an extra pair of glasses now that I'm freaking blind, now that I'm old. Oh, and this, okay, see this? This cost 99 cents at the 99 cent only store. It's a clock that I keep the batteries outside of it so it won't go, batteries won't go bad. And when I get to wherever I'm going, I pull it out and I put it on the nightstand because you don't always want to have to be looking at your phone to find out what time it is, you know? Oh, that's an excellent, excellent yeah. tip. I love that. I was just going to ask you about the phone, but that makes perfect sense. And then if- I you, love that. You know, if, if it's not, it costs 99 cents. If something happens to it, you know, who cares? But here's the thing, in all the trips I've taken, nothing has ever happened. Nothing has ever happened to that 99 cent clock. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we're, we're just about at the end. We're almost finished with our drinks. But, but uh, the last question is on the wedding. Can you share an update on the wedding plans for Curly Girl? Anything to report other than the booze that you bought it at, uh, at Grocery Outlet? Okay, so Curly Girl is getting married up at Mount Baldy, which some of you may know where that is and some of you may not. Um, it's up just if you go straight up the hill from Claremont, it's Mount Baldy. It's a little tiny community of a half dozen people, very small. And um, we went up there and yeah, I looked and looked and looked and looked at a million different places and she wanted something rustic and outdoors. But I don't want to do any work, you know? And if you do, okay, I, if you can hear a little Wayne barking, I apologize for that. But what can I do? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, I found these like rustic places that wanted to give you a rustic wedding for like $25,000. I'm like, are you kidding? I can't do it. But it, here's the thing. I, I can't do a lot of work, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll this way. I don't want to do a lot of work, okay? I yeah, want to right. I want to show up and I want to have a good time. So I wanted a place that was basically all inclusive. And we found this place and we love it. Now that we've got a contract, I can tell you about it because I don't want anybody else to snatch our date, but it's called Pond Oaks and it's up in Mount Baldy. And it's like $11,000 all inclusive for like a hundred people. I mean, some of you are going like, are you kidding? That's a fortune. But after you've been shopping for a wedding for a while, it suddenly seems like the deal of the century. So she's getting married to this place called Pond Oaks in May. And it's really beautiful. And they provide everything. They have the ceremony site there. I mean, honestly, some of these places are like, 
oh yeah, it's twenty three dollars for the for the reception, and then oh by the way, it's an extra two thousand dollars for the ceremony site, and you're like, what? You just have to throw some chair, you know. I was literally like, you just have to throw some chairs out there. Are you charging me $2,000 to throw chairs out there? And they're like, well, yes, right? And then the wine, oh my gosh. So these places I was looking at were like, for every bottle of wine, it was like $26 for a bottle of wine that I happened to know was a $3 bottle of wine, right? And I'm just like, no, I can't. I can't. Right. But I also didn't want to do all the work because I actually want to have fun. I never got married because I'm too mean. And, you know, I just, so this is not only my daughter's wedding. Or too, or too smart. No, me just say that. Anyway. Well, you know, those of you who've been married can, you know, judge that. But anyway, um, and uh, so this is not only my daughter's wedding, it's my wedding, right? So, but on the other hand, I'm a very poorly paid journalist. Sorry, boss, but it's true. And uh, so <laughs> I have a lot of money lying around, right? So I'm just really happy with our choice. And I think it was a really great deal. And that just proves keep looking, right? Keep yeah. looking, keep looking. So I'm really happy with, you know, with every, the way everything turned out. And it's not until May, but she's already announced that, mm -hmm. You know, she knows how things want to go and she's doing things her way, you know. There we go. All right. Well, listen, now it's time to say goodbye to all our family. M-I-C-K. Oh, wait, that's another show. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, tune in again next month when we're going to do this all over again, right? December 17th. That's when we do it again. Well, whatever the case may be, see us next time. Go to scng.com forward slash virtual events to catch up on all of our old shows and see what's coming up. And again, join us uh, for what we've got scheduled. We'll see you next time. Be safe and um, cheers. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.